why don't we saw how power series work in general, we've now got to start thinking about how to build these things, okay? Now, most of the times, power series can be very hard to build, and some of the weirder functions, like the Bessel functions that you'll see in differential equations and engineering, uh, they have some very funky power series expressions. In fact, a lot of this power series you see in differential equations when you talk about power series solutions are very, very funky. But we're going to start with some of the basic ones, right? In fact, we can actually start with building a very, very basic power series based on a series that you know. Huh. I really hope that you've remembered some of those basic definitions, right? So let's take a look at this function here, okay? 1 over 1 plus x, okay? I know how to take the derivative. I know how to take the integral. I can evaluate this at places, but maybe I want to estimate. I want to find the power series representation for this function centered at 0, okay? So let's recall, okay, that for a general power series, okay, a power series, remember, is the so-called infinite polynomial. The sum can start at 0 or at 1 or at 2 or wherever, but in general, it's just some numbers times x to the n, okay? In general, okay, let's break down the general case here. This is x minus a to the n. Okay, A is called the center. Okay, A is called the center of the power series. Okay, Sean, how does that help us? I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Just be patient, okay? So, this function looks awfully similar to a special kind of sum that we've seen before. In fact, it's the formula for a certain kind of special sum. Let's kind of recall our geometric series, okay? Well, if we start here, the geometric series, if I take the sum here from n equals 0 to infinity of, say, q to the n, there's a reason I'm using q, because one of my instructors uses q, okay? This is just 1 over 1 minus q. And this converges when the absolute value of q is less than 1. But, Sean, we have a plus, not a minus. Why not just change that plus to a minus by instead thinking of it like this? Maybe if you think of it like this, f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x instead of that. How about 1 over 1 minus negative x? Ah, clever, 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 right? Okay, so here what we're going to do, we're going to use the... Here, we're going to make the replacement q equals negative x. Everything still works, okay? This is still centered at zero, okay? This is still our basic geometric series, but now we're flipping it so that it's now an alternating series, okay? So by the geometric series, okay? So by the geometric series formula, okay, one over one plus x, which we've established above as the same as one over one minus negative x, well, we're just replacing x with negative x. Okay, and I'm going to do one last step here. Negative x is the same as negative 1 times negative x. We'll take a look here. Negative 1 to the n times x to the n. That's your power series. That is your power series. Okay, let's just write this out, okay, just so that you see what this is, okay? So... Uh, let's use a different color here, different blue here. So f of x is really, you know, 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth. That's all that is. That's a power series right there, okay? The coefficients are plus and minus 1. So that's your power series set at 0. But now let's think about the interval of convergence, okay? Remember, this only converges at a certain point. Now, of course, you already know that the interval of convergence is on minus 1, 1. Okay, just the interior of that interval, but okay, how did we do it before? Okay, well, use the ratio test, okay? Okay, so let's do this. So for interval, okay, we're going to use the ratio test. Okay, remember, anytime you want an interval of convergence, it's just a ratio test. Okay, so we have the limit here as n goes to infinity of, well, let's take a look here, replace. The ends with n plus 1's here. And hey, look, just about everything cancels, right? 
x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n is just x. That gets shoved outside the limit. Okay, because that's independent of n. And what am I really left with here? Absolute value of minus 1. That's just 1. Yeah. So we have absolute value of x, which is less than 1. So the interval convergence, okay, is at the very least minus 1 to 1. Now, of course, we still have to check the endpoints, okay, but you should know, okay, since we built this from the geometric series, okay, we're just making the replacements here, and it retains the original interval convergence. So I'll leave it as an exercise, okay? But we know, okay, from previous knowledge, okay, previous knowledge says the sum diverges. Okay, for x equals 1 and x equals minus 1, okay? Previous knowledge says that. So the interval convergence is just the open interval from minus 1 to 1. Okay, that's how that one's done. We use a basic sum that we know, made a bit of replacements here, use the information, built the power series. But what if I don't want it centered at zero? What if I want it centered at two? This is where it gets a little funky here, okay? So let's go ahead and write in uh, what our function is here, okay? f of x is one over one plus x. But I want this centered at two, okay? Remember, if we're centering at two, okay? Let's use this orange color here. The center of power series at two that means I want powers of x minus 2, okay? x minus 2 to the n. And so this is going to be where some dirty tricks come in, okay? What I'm going to do to... Because really what I want to use is still this geometric series fact, 1 over 1 minus q here. But this q may not just be an x. It could be, say, a negative x, which we saw before. Maybe an x plus 1, an x minus 7. We're going to have to fiddle with it a little bit. So what I want to do here is first in the denominator... I'm going to subtract 2, and then I'm going to add 2, okay? And I'll highlight the important part here in orange, okay? x minus 2 to the n, x minus 2 to the n. See how I have that there, right? Okay, why am I doing that? Because at the end, I ultimately want some x minus 2s to appear, okay? Well, now let's go ahead and clean this up, okay? That's why I've changed back to the pen. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. So I have 3 plus, put this in parentheses, x minus 2. So the first dirty trick was add 0, okay? The first dirty trick was add 0. The second dirty trick is to factor a 3 out of the denominator, okay? Why do I want that? Because I always want 1 over 1 plus or minus something. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that here. I'm going to pull a 3 out. What that means is, okay, just divide both those parts by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then plus x minus 2 over 3. Okay. Now, okay, we'll ignore the 1 third. We'll shove it outside, okay, and make some replacements here. But I want you to keep in mind what we're really after, right? I'm really after this 1 over 1 minus q thing, okay? I'm really after 1 over 1 minus q. Or whatever simple you want. What's going to be my Q here? My Q, I'll highlight in the same color there. My Q is actually X minus 2 over 3, okay? Q is X minus 2 over 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to build a power series centered at 2, okay? So, how does that work out, okay? So, here's what we know. I know that f of x is, well, let's pull the one-third out here. And then I have one-third times one over one plus x minus two over three, okay? And I know what q is, and I'm just going to now build my series, okay? Actually, in fact, I should say that q is the negative, okay? q is the negative of that thing, I'm sorry. Let's fix that. Q is the negative, okay, because we built this off a 1 plus, okay? 
So what that means here is I just follow my power series pattern here. It's still going to be negative one to the n. I have x minus two over three to the n. Okay, if I wanted to tidy this up a little bit, okay, I have one third times this whole thing here, negative one to the n, x minus two to the n over three to the n. And then I can shove the extra three inside. And so ultimately my power series looks like this, negative one to the n times x minus two to the n over three to the n plus one. That's my power series. That's my power series. Okay. And now, of course, for my interval of convergence, okay, we still have to do the usual thing, ratio test as usual. But remember that the power series will retain the original interval of convergence after you've made some replacements. But just for the exercise, let's go ahead and show how that's done, right? So for the interval of convergence, okay, just like before, take the limit here, okay, replace the ends with n plus ones and then n plus one plus one is n plus two okay times take the reciprocal okay and now the usual stuff cancels right okay so my negative one powers that's just going to drop out to be a one anyway so who cares all right, uh, let me show you what's left over here. Okay. Well, I'm kind of running out of a bit of room here, but that's fine. Well, what's left over here is I have an X minus two on top. Okay, and on the bottom, I have a three. Well, that limit doesn't even depend on N anyway, so everything just gets shoved out. Okay. So we can just ignore the limit here. I want this to be less than one. Okay, you can kind of see that the uh, radius convergence is going to be 3, but let's just uh, see here. I just want the interval. Okay, get x minus 2 is less than 3. Solve the absolute value inequality in the usual fashion, right? Okay, so if I add 2 across, I get negative 1. It's less than x. It's less than 5. Okay, and I know my interval of convergence is here, negative 1 to 5. And because this is a geometric series, okay, remember if the common ratio is exactly one, we have an issue, okay? But, you know, you could probably, you could still uh, do some checks here, okay? Does this converge at the endpoints? Well, uh, let's add a new page real quick, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm going to make this blank here. Apply the current page. There we go. All right, so I want to check to see if this converges, okay, at the endpoints, okay? So let's look at our power series once again, uh, which I'll just go ahead and rewrite here. So our power series that we had to look at was this guy here, okay? Negative one to the n times x minus two to the n over three to the n plus one. And I know that my interval of convergence is at the very least from negative one to five. Okay, so we need to check the endpoints. Okay, so let's check the endpoints here. Uh, f of negative one, say, what does that give us? Well, negative one minus two is negative three. Okay, so I have negative three to the n divided by three to the n plus one. Okay, well, negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. Okay, we'll take a look at what I have here, okay? 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1. Uh-oh, something goes wrong here. Because in the end, I'm just summing a bunch of one-thirds. That diverges. Okay, I'm just summing a bunch of constants here, so that diverges. Okay. Now let's check the other endpoints, okay? We want to look at f of, uh, come on, erase, f of 5. Okay, so we're going to replace x with 5 here. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 
and you'll see that the exact same thing happens here. I just sum a bunch of constants here, okay? All I'm left with here is a negative one third that diverges. So we show that our interval of convergence is indeed just this open set here, okay? okay it's still a very good idea to do to check. All right. So same thing here, okay? Again, this is a dirty trick that we'll just have to get used to. It's just to manipulate it, but we're starting from this basic geometric series, okay? One more. Oh, that looks different. So how do I work with this one? There are lots of ways you can work with this one, okay? Remember, I want to work with, say, something that looks like a geometric series, okay? Let's try to start basic, okay? Let's start with some basic basic ones okay here it would be nice if that 2x wasn't there okay we have 2x over x to the fourth plus nine It'd be nice if that 2x wasn't there so let's ignore the 2x for a second here so i'll let g let's have a helper function here one over and i'll kind of swap things over nine plus x to the fourth okay so that almost looks like something that we've worked with okay um, but we got to do a bit of manipulation here, right? I want to make this look like, say, a 1 over 1 minus Q type of thing, or even 1 over 1 plus Q, okay? In fact, the plus form is what we need. So we're going to do that same dirty trick again, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Whoops. We're going to do this. We have G of X. Is this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and factor a four, a 9 out, Okay. Factor 9 out of the denominator, what does that give us? 1 plus x to the 4th over 9, okay. And remember what I want, okay? Remember what I want here, okay? I want this 1 over 1 minus q here, okay? Which is a sum of the q to the n's, okay? Well, what's my q here? Okay, here, my q is in the 1 plus here, okay? My q is negative x to the fourth over nine. How? Well, let's do that extra step here just so you all can see it, okay? In fact, let's write it like this. One over nine times one over one minus a negative x to the fourth over nine. Now that looks familiar. And now I'm just going to make replacements, okay? One over nine times the sum here, okay? We're going to use our geometric series formula once again, okay? But this time it's alternating. Negative 1 to the n times x to the 4 over 9 to the n, which is just this, okay? After I distribute the powers, x to the 4n divided by 9 to the n. That's a power series right there. That's a power series. Now, of course, you can shove the 9 through, and then you got it. But now the question is, well, I wanted the representation for f, not for g. That's why I called g a helper function, okay? g is a helper function, okay? So we're going to notice this, okay? So notice that f of x, okay, our original f here, it's just g of x times 2x. It's 2x times g of x. So I can, now that I have a representation for g, my helper function, I can get a representation for f, my original function. So what we're going to do, f of x is just 2x times our power series representation for g. Okay, negative 1 to the n times x to the 4n over 9 to the n. All right. Well, hey, take a look now. The 2, I'll just combine that with the 2. Well, let's just shove everything through, right? Okay, x, I can just shove inside. I'm multiplying every term by x. So every exponent on the x gets added 1. Yeah. Okay, we're doing a few things here at a time. So we have still have negative 1 to the n. Okay. Then I have a 2 over 9. Okay. But take a look what I'm going to do here, right? I'll do 2 times x to the 4n, but we have an x. Okay, let's just draw an arrow here. That gets multiplied. So I'm increasing the exponent of x by 1. Divided by 
9 to the n plus 1. Okay, because now that 9 gets absorbed in there. And take a look. That's a power series representation for our F. Excellent. Interval of convergence, well, you already know the deal, right? Ratio test. Okay, so for the interval. Okay, for the interval of convergence. Okay, we do the usual. Take the limit. Make sure my screen doesn't uh, do weird things. So we take a limit here. All right, minus one to the n plus one times 2x to the, now we're going to be careful here, 4n plus 1 plus 1, or 9 to the n plus 2, then we have 9 to the n plus 1 over negative 1 to the n times 2 times x to the 4n plus 1. All right, lots of things can cancel here. Okay, I have an n plus 1 9 n to the n plus 1 on top, 9 to the n plus 2 on the bottom. That was just different by 1. So I really have a 9 left over on the bottom. Okay. Uh, the minus 1s won't even diff matter anyway. Uh, the only thing i got to be careful with is just these powers of x's here. Okay. So I'll just pull out the 9. Okay. Times the limit as n goes to infinity of this limit here. Okay. x to the 4n. So distribute plus 4 plus 1. Okay. Oh, and the twos dropped there. I should have noticed that as well. I have x to the 4n plus 1. Okay. Well, if I mess with the exponents there, I just get an x to the fourth there. Independent of n, it just gets shoved out. So really, I just have the requirements that absolute value of x to the fourth over 9 is less than 1. Okay. So we go through the usual thing, right? So we solve an absolute value of inequality, but that's an inequality on x to the fourth. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of extra things here. Okay, let me just go all to the side here since I have a bit more room here. We have absolute x to the four. Okay, uh, let me write this here. Absolute of x to the fourth power is less than nine, just after my multiplying by nine. Okay. Then, okay, I'm going to do a little trick here. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do the trick. Okay. We know that I have the absolute value of something is less than nine. So I know that I have negative nine. It's less than x to the fourth power. That's the inside. It's less than nine. And now I'm going to take the fourth root. Okay. So when I take the fourth root of something, okay, well, we got to be a little careful. Because remember, for even powered roots, I can only take those if the argument, the inside is positive. If I take the square root of negative 9, I get a complex number. Okay, so we note, okay, that x to the fourth is greater than or equal to 0. So it's enough for me to look at between 0, x to the fourth, and 9. Now I take fourth roots. Okay. So I take fourth roots. Well, fourth root of 0 is 0. And fourth root of nine, well, that's actually just the square root of three. Well, let's take a look here. The fourth root of nine, okay, is the square root of the square root of nine. Okay. So if nine to the one-fourth power. But then notice here that nine to the one-fourth is the same as nine to the one-half to the one-half. So we have a square root of three there. Sorry, we have a 3 on the inside there. I went ahead a little step. 3 is the square root of 9 to 1 half power. That's just the square root of 3. So my interval of convergence is from 0 to the square root of 3. But remember, for interval of convergence, I have to check the boundary. Okay, I have to check the boundary. Okay, now I can see by inspection x equals 0 is perfectly fine. Okay, x equals zero should always be perfectly fine for a lot of these, okay? But let's go ahead and verify this, okay? Let's add a new page here. Okay, so in fact, I should probably not say this here. I know that it converges on this open set, but I have to check the boundary. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new page. Okay, got a blank page there, that's good. Okay, so we need to check the endpoints. 
Jack and points. All right, so we're going to check x equals zero here, and I claim that it works. Okay, so g of x. Well, you can see this immediately. If you plug in g of x equals zero, you get zero, but let's just check with the power series, right? So if we check with the power series, right? We have negative one to the nth power times two, zero to the four n plus one over nine to the, let's make sure I have this right, nine to the n plus one. Take a look here, zero to any integer power is zero. And look at what that happens here. I'm just summing a bunch of zeros. That's convergent, no matter what. Okay, so we, that adds a check mark there. But now we need to check square root of three. Okay, now we have to check the square root of three, okay. Now, uh, I should probably, let me actually go back for a second here. And I want to uh, really, really harp on this step here, okay? So, we need the absolute value of x to the fourth to be less than nine. And following our usual absolute value inequality, we have that, you know, the inside has to be between negative nine and nine. But x to the fourth, okay, any even power, okay, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, will always be greater than or equal to zero. So, there's no way that it's going to be greater that negative nine can come into play here because we're immediately going to get a problem when I take four fruits. I'm going to get some complex numbers here. We're not going to worry about complex numbers for now. <laughs> Just wait till complex analysis. Same rules apply. But we have to be very careful. So that's why we modified this to strengthen this lower bound. Okay. Hopefully that cleared that up a little. So we do the same thing here. Okay. I note here that I want a g of zero. Okay. So g of square root of three Okay, we can see by plugging stuff in, but let's just check with the power series definition here that we created. Negative one to the n times two, square root of three to the four n plus one, okay, over nine to the n plus one, okay. Um, you can do a bit of extra manipulations here. Um, and in fact, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm gonna use some exponent rules. Okay, so we have negative one to the n times two, square root of three to the four n times square root of three to the first power, that's just square root of three. All right, and now I'm gonna try to manipulate this and see if I get a geometric series that makes sense here. Okay, well, first off, power to a power, square root of three to the fourth power, that's just nine, okay. Uh, perhaps I should write that in here. So square root of three to the four n, remember power to a power makes it a superpower. Okay. And square root of three to the fourth power, that's just square root of three squared times square root of three squared, that's just nine. Okay. So that's that part taken care of. So I have two times nine, which is 18 times minus one to the n square root of three over nine to the n plus one. Okay. And you're going to notice some magic happening here. Okay. 18 square root of 3, that's a constant, so I can go ahead and shove that out. Sean, where did the 18 come from? Actually, you know what? I was not very careful here. Because this is, that should be 9 to the nth power, okay? So let me go ahead and highlight what I did here. Sorry about that. So here, the square root of 3 to the 4n gets turned into 9 to the nth power, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do some extra manipulations here. Pull the square root of 3 out of the sum, just to tidy it up a little. Okay, negative 1 times 9 is a negative 9. Okay, or actually even better, we can look here. Negative 9 to the n divided by 9 to the n plus 1, a 9 gets left over on the bottom. So I have negative 1 to the n over nine. It's geometric. No, it's not. It's not geometric. In fact, okay. I'm just summing. Basically what I'm summing here is minus ones and plus ones. That limit doesn't exist. Let's write this in red here. Okay. That limit does not exist. Be very careful. Okay.
Divergence but a div test. Okay. So we have convergence at zero, but not at square root of three. So what do we conclude? The interval of convergence converges at zero, but not at the square root of three. Okay, we gotta be extremely careful here. Okay. So what did all this show you? That geometric series that we talked about at the very beginning of chapter five, well, it's coming back, okay? And that is actually gonna be a nice tool to help us develop some basic power series, okay? In 6.2, we're gonna see how to, we can use this fact to develop some new power series from old, okay? Some operations, okay? Term by term differentiation and integration. We'll wave our hands to uniform convergence. We don't need that yet, okay? But we gotta use this basic idea, right? One over one minus X. That's our basic series. And by doing some replacements, we can get some familiar functions represented as power series. And I'll see you in the next one.